Hi everyone. A viewer named Jim Pritz asked me about my tool post in one of my other videos, and he was asking specifically about the angle of this handle. Now this handle locks and unlocks the cam that moves the wedges on my tool post. Now his question was about the angle here. When mine is locked down, it's about at the, uh, I'm going to say 5 o'clock position actually, if this is 12. Um, in his, it's actually locked in way up here and it's hanging out way over the workpiece. I initially thought he might have this oriented incorrectly. Uh, you should have a dovetail on the left hand side of the tool post if you're standing back here where I am, and you should have one on the far side. A lot of times people will turn this and you'll end up with a dovetail here and here. Um, you should have one in turning position and in facing position. That's not his issue though. For him, it is just locking down way the heck up here, and he doesn't like it hanging over the workpiece. So to help Jim out, I'm going to take apart my tool post and see what kind of adjustability is in here to see if we can get his cam in the right position. I've never actually had one of these apart, so it's going to be new for me as well. One more thing to consider is the size of the dovetail in the holders. Uh, on this one, it is about the 4 or 5 o'clock position, but if I put on this other holder, it actually tightens up considerably more. It's more like the 6 o'clock, maybe 6.30 position. So the size of that dovetail, whether it's wider or narrower, also affects that. I kind of doubt that's the, the case here because they try to make these as, as consistent as possible, but of course there's going to be variants. I'm going to address one other thing while I've got all this taken apart, and that's the insane amount of stick out on this screw. I have been busting my knuckles on this stupid thread for about oh, 12 years or so. And the reason it's sticking out so much is because the manufacturers of these tool posts don't know what lathe you have. They want to make sure that you're going to be able to fit this on a wide range of machines. So with that said, the T-nut that actually fits down into the compound is shipped oversized and you're expected to machine it to fit your particular lathe. Likewise, this screw is very long because they don't know what the swing is. It could be a bigger lathe with a much deeper T-slot in the compound. So they give you a lot of wiggle room, and in this case I have probably an inch and a quarter sticking up. Uh, I'll measure that and then just cut that off and face it. This is the T-nut that I was talking about. And again, you would machine that to fit your particular slot. This just unscrews out of the T-nut. No big deal. And now I'll be able to just chuck this up in the lathe and I'll actually bandsaw it off first. It was about an inch and an eighth long. Like I said, I've never had one of these apart, but it appears that this bit here is holding the handle on. This is actually a solid piece, minus the hole, that goes all the way through to here, and I can tell just looking at it that this is threaded. So I'll have to come up with some kind of spanner and open this up. Hopefully it doesn't fight me too much. Uh, the other thing is there's a screw right here. Not really sure what that's for. I think it may actually be a stop to keep the wedges from going down too far. Uh, it's The face of the screw definitely seems to have been hitting, probably down here on the compound. Uh, so, I don't know, we'll see when I take it apart. Here are all the parts of the tool post, and I've always been calling this a cam, but it really isn't. This is actually a triple start 
Acme screw with a six millimeter pitch. You can see a thread starting there, there, and there. That means that the distance from thread to thread is six millimeters, but since there's three starts, if I make one complete turn of this handle, it advances by 18 millimeters. That's connecting with the wedges, and those look an awful lot like lathe jaws on the back. So when you turn this, it feeds them downwards. Now one thing I noticed about mine is that there was very little lubrication on the inside. I had uh, the remnants of some grease in this groove up here, and that was just about it. I, I've always thought it felt a little bit grainy on the inside, so I'm going to go ahead and grease the threads and the back here. Um, I know that chips can get in through this section, so I'm not sure if that's really the way to go, um, because that lubrication will hold on to those chips but I think it should have something on there. I'm sure if I'm wrong, someone will let me know in the comments. I just got this put back together and I just realized what Jim's problem actually is. This cam has a triple start thread. So if he actually had taken this apart, which I think he said he had in the comments, uh, right now I'm holding the wedges to keep them from falling down. And if I do that, I can feel the start of the thread and he can engage that thread at three different spots. I've actually got one of the wedges in the wrong spot right now. So right now the two wedges are the same height and this would be the left hand side of the tool and the front side of the tool and this would be locking right about there. That's about how far down they go before they engage the tool post. So what he needs to do is just take it off. He doesn't need to take it all apart unless he wants to lubricate it and clean it, uh, but put it into a vise and then just turn to a different thread on the, the cam. So here, this is totally loose, and when it tightens up, it should be in the correct location. There you go, Jim. At least I'm assuming yours also has this triple start thread on the inside. Uh, if it does, fantastic. Give this a shot and let me know in the comments if it worked. Speaking of comments, if you have any machining or tool related questions that you'd like answered, go ahead and put them down in the comment section below. I'm always looking for new video ideas and the comment section is a great place to find them. While you're down there, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons as well. It always helps the channel. And if you're interested in supporting the channel further, please check out my Patreon page. The link's down in the description as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Jim Pritz. Jim, Jimmy, Jim, Jim, Jim. Jimmy Pritz. Big Jim. I've never actually been inside one of these guys. Ooh, that's bad phrasing there. <laughs>